an organization of residents of Princeton Borough and Township with diverse backgrounds, interests, and talents. Princeton Future has grown out of a concern that much of the planning and proposed development of the critical downtown spaces have been proceeding in an unconnected manner. The aim of Princeton Future is to assist the municipal authority to take a forward-looking and more comprehensive approach. Investigation and consultation undertaken by Princeton Future indicates that these objectives are achievable with good planning. More detailed studies and further involvement of all concerned parties are, however, clearly called for. Hello?
Charlotte Fiala, and of course she is the vice president, I guess, of the school board, and former president, and of course they own the Valley Road building. Ricardo Bruce, who lives on uh, Witherspoon Street, he also is a member of the Center and Review Advisory Board. Hendrix Davis, who lives in the John Witherspoon neighborhood. Jessica Dury, who owns Small Girl Coffee, is the business owner. Heidi Fickenbaum, who lives on Carnahan Place, is, and is an architect. Michael Floyd, who also was born and raised in Princeton, lives in Lawrenceville, but is also uh, an executive of the Housing Mortgage Finance Agency in New Jersey. Uh, Jeff Fury, who is a Witherspoon Street resident. Alan Goodhart, born and raised in Princeton, is a landscape architect. Pam Hirsch, from the university. Susan Jeffries, who's a Moore Street resident. Joanna Kende, who is a Jay Bethany neighborhood resident and architect. Raul Momo, who owns Witherspoon Street Bread, Mediterranean Teresa, obviously is a business owner of Witherspoon Street. Ajay Fennell, this is here, he's a student at Princeton High School. Suzanne Staggs is a community park PTO uh, representative. Dennis Stark, who lives on Kenny Avenue. Michael Super, who is from the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee. And Karen Wolfgang, who is a Princeton University student. So, what we attempted to do was bring from all different perspectives, well, experience and relationship to the street, a uh, group of people who um, can certainly continue to dis discuss the issues that we've got all outlined today. Now, I want to also, for a minute, so that no one forgets this, <laughs> we didn't get our, our uh, email out to remind everyone of today's meeting, but there's been an additional meeting set for February 16th, which is a Wednesday, and it's in the evening, I think it's 7, <coughs> 7 o'clock, We'll be here in the library, and it was added actually between what was this day for a meeting and a March meeting to provide um, additional opportunity for those who could be on Saturday to come in and meet me. Uh, we know we had uh, some merchants who found it difficult to get there Saturday morning as well. Okay, let's take a look at what we're going to be, or how we're going to structure our continued discussion of all of the issues we've talked about in the history. What I've done here is this is a, a matrix of, of a, a thought process. And it goes beyond the issues and concerns, <coughs> observations and initial responses, into the actual um, recommendations in terms of the options through their design or implementation of policy, as you'll see on the empty columns to the right. Michael Mossbeller, going to be our van of white. <laughs> Today, because what we are needing to do is always go back and forth from the visual sense of what we're talking about to having recorded as much of that. And some things obviously are better communicated on the front drawing. Some will have off words, but we want to get as much of all on, on tape and in your hand. This is a draft. This uses North Witherspoon Street as sort of a, uh, our first cut on paper, but there will be central as well as south sections. And the first column is organized in a format which really relates to how our report is structured. And as Michael described earlier on, he said we call them maps. The first map is existing conditions. And the issues that we're talking about in existing conditions. We'll, we'll call this one the existing condition okay. for today. Okay. I'll try to get out of the back of the camera. My finger stays on the um, Coordination, development, and residential uses seem to be sort of a prevailing theme um, around the existing conditions. Looking at coordination and moving to the right, was that there was lack of coordination between the municipalities with regard to the street. Michael has, for the first time, I think, in any of uh, our planning processes, has actually connected the street.
participate on drawing on all levels that are going to be very useful hopefully to a lot of the planning processes. But this, this is one that's very specific. It's now brought the township and the borough together. Let, let me just show you that because it, in the end it is there's going to use uh, when we get over here particularly going to affect the actual work because the change in the municipalities goes right through the center. So there were always maps that showed the borough and there were always, uh, in fact there was, a, there was one single map that the borough had created that we used at our earlier sessions, if you remember that map, it's shown as the basis on, on those maps over there. Uh, but there was never any uh, way to actually see some things that were very obvious. Uh, I mean, there are some streets right here, like Carnahan, that people live on, that relate to the hospital, that were never really a possibility in the future that we might suggest is whether or not such a thing as a street extension. Well, it's only really visualizable and <coughs> realizable if, in fact, we have this coordinated map. Uh, we're also, as you can see, making a 3D <coughs> existing conditions map uh, over there. Uh, <clears throat> which actually shows the structures themselves. And I think at the end of today, we hope you have some sort of greater appreciation that on the one hand, uh, a physical modeling shows you from the air things that we might visualize easier. And this, you might say, this decomposition or deconstruction of the elements in the parts allows them to identify them. At a certain point, they'll all come back to another overlay over the existing, which would be the proposed summary map. So the observations with regard to those uh, issues of lack of coordination were the width of the street, the sidewalk alignment, landscape treatment, setbacks, zoning de designations. And as an initial response, well, that's continuity through you know, redesign. That's a just basic. Um, with regard to development, it's either the incremental and uncoordinated, while in the observation it may be use compliant but not in character, and we'll get further into the character issue later on. Initial response was to rezone to reinforce the residential use, which is also further discussed later. With regard to the issue of residential uses, uh, in the north area particularly, um, and it, it, it is shared in, in this sense with, with the other areas. It's an isolation of residential properties, um, and that there's commercial proliferation, and that the response was to increase residential commercial. Michael, you want to say something about that? Well, I'm just pointing out that <clears throat> the two uh, business zones on the street, in fact, there is one in each municipality, being one, existing and RB existing. And these boxes show those uh, actual boundaries of that. Um, the key one for the township is really commercial, not a residential. Right. So, so this is the overall uh, zoning map, and you can see we have R3 and R4 abutting in the borough, and R8, R9, and R6 abutting in the township. So the, the um, uh, commercial zone in the township covers those string of houses right there? Yes. Correct. Yes. And that zone, if I understand correctly, does not require a mix of commercial and residential. Well, right. So any it's property right. could be yeah. all one or the other. And all commercial. <laughs> exactly. That okay. pertains to the side that is facing with is that correct? Correct. correct. So that's the area facing with the street. Not in the, the line of Cunningham Street. Yeah, does it go no, into no. the yard? No. no. Does it go in? How you mean, mean like to your block? That's what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the line is in the backyard. Oh, it's just in the backyard. So you're, you're an RA. Township R9 is similar to the girls R4. Yeah, then it gets to be a home. Okay, we try to figure out what that's. Um, and 
I think the R8 is similar to the R3. R and R3. Okay, um, let's go into the landscape and open space. Um, on landscaping, and, and the concerns we're working out to environmental quality and management, landscaping, very treatments, poor condition on older trees and too few trees in places with there were gaps. And the initial response is sort of establish a public area treatment. You know, we're talking about something with continuity uh, um, it's through whether it's a residential, commercial, or a mixed property. Uh, replant with smaller trees came as uh, some of the initial responses. And I can tell you some of this has input from, from our Thursday meeting, but it's not, it's not uh, exhaustive. Um, and coordinate the spacing of, of trees. There are a lot of, a lot of ideas on the landscaping and Michael and I want to go through. I want to do that now? Yeah. Uh, let me just make sure everybody's oriented. Uh, in this set of maps, which are all essentially the same, but although each map shows something different, uh, the, this is Nassau Hall, and the green around Nassau Hall, the original uh, founding space and building <coughs> of the university. Uh, the major downtown commercial uh, cluster, the library, the arts council, the cemetery, and then you can see there are, and then it shifts to both sides all the way down to the hospital. We then have the hospital block. Uh, then it goes back to primarily residential, even though it's contradicted by the fact that it's a business zone. Uh, here, the packet uh, community park school and you begin to see the emergence of a more civic complex orientation at this side flank on both sides with open space the valley road field and the community park spaces uh, the new municipal building church and the uh, township public works building and then the little commercial strip right here so that orients you if we go back to landscape uh, we, we do feel that that uh, combined with some sort of study and, and potential reordering, reorganization, and traffic management up here, that it is a, it is an entry to the town, no matter if in fact we encourage people to go by rather than that Luther's Street. Uh, it turned out someone suggested that we should plant bulbs. My son's horticulture class at the high school was planting bulbs that day. We met actually. Uh, right here, uh, <clears throat> it's, so it's identified at that level uh, as an important place that is a community. We might even want to have a sign that says welcome to Princeton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but certainly one of the positive qualities of this entry to Princeton, as is the particular one down into Washington Road, is the green, the open space, you have a lot of open space over here. You have the theater, and you have this this entry here, and then you come up the hill. And it's just this little knot right here that is a traffic problem, which we can talk about in a little bit, and a, a, a semi-eyesore in the sense that it's just nobody's ever thought about doing anything about it. Uh, a lot of the things that might be recommended as improvements are, in fact, things that if we open our eyes Corbusier based all of his architecture on a, on a theory that he called eyes that you not see. Uh, we go by here so often that we tend not to see anything that could be more potentially nice, and, and that could be entirely landscape treatment. Uh, the other is going to be all the way down the street in competition with the landscape treatment, and even the scale of the structures in the back is the utility poles, which are extraordinarily uh, overscaled and uh, overpopulated because of the high power demands of a modern technological uh, animal like the uh, hospital. Uh, so that uh, all the MRIs, when they're all turned on. <laughs> now, this, this, by the way, is the romantic question that we might be able to have. Uh, if you look on, on, it's probably over there somewhere behind, right behind that, you can see that. On his left, the power poles and the church steeple. Uh, this, by the magic of my pen, I 
somehow or another forgot to draw them in, uh, showing what might happen. So in the end, there are, uh, there are potentially very simple things that could go a long way uh, in terms of the landscape uh, that reinforces, I think, everything that we think about Princeton. And in fact, we think so much about Princeton that we tend not to see some of the things that are contradictory to it. Uh, um, I'll go ahead and just finish the landscape piece. On the open space, as Michael said, there's very, very public spaces. There's the community park lawn, there's the municipal complex, certainly there's the, um, the park, um, the tennis courts, the fields. And the open space that for the rest of the street as well as for some of the other pockets, um, the initial response was identify opportunities for open space pockets further further south, which is, and for example, in the, uh, the hospital site. Uh, in fact, what, the only thing that relieves its crowdedness, its overcrowdedness now, is the little tent of something open in the middle, and that should probably be made real and, and preserved. Um, and that there was mention that there may be future needs and, and plans by the uh, recreation department with regard to the community pool uh, complex. On the management side, Michael mentioned some of these in the, in the landscape issues of lighting, that there are dark intersections and crosswalks that were observed. There was uh, certainly the initial response is to improve lighting, and that comes in a lot of uh, issues on the, on the traffic, uh, on the, uh, the pedestrian issues, on the transportation utility section that's next. Uh, signage, with a lack of community ID, as Michael noted. Um, welcome, to Princeton, but the welcome to Princeton sign as part of a traffic management thought was that the sign has an arrow that directs you <laughs> to the right, <laughs> and the right is to keep moving on 206 until you find where you're likely is, if you're coming from out of town, if you're not actually coming to a residence or business on Witherspoon Street, that if you're coming for the downtown, it might be best to go up to the intersection of Paul Brooks and take a left there and go to the parking garage. Right into the garage. So it's probably the most convenient way. So just that little reorientation, uh, and now that we have the garage right here connected to this sort of back way through town, uh, uh, that's indicated here. I might add uh, just a methodological note. Uh, uh, tradition I grew up in in terms of architecture planning and urban design is that it's a, it's a method that moves forward by making statements that at, at some initial level are diagrammatic and blobs or lines or dashes or something like that. That A1 provide the mechanism for the identification of the, of the unification of the analysis onto the physical space where it may occur. And then what we're saying here, for example, is that uh, not only might there be a need for public green, but in terms of pedestrian, between this pedestrian space, this new pedestrian realm here, the new pedestrian realm down at the, at the uh, township building, there is in fact nothing but overpopulated sidewalks that are too small. So this is just indicating, is there anything anywhere we can do? And this site is one of the key ones right in the middle for now eventually we will try to make these more and more concrete, more and more accurate, more and more specific, and, and more and more wonderful. But this is the initial, this set of stuff represents the visual recording of our conversation at the advisory board, trying to translate this onto the actual physical world uh, in a diagrammatic way that allows us to go to the next step, which would be, well, what if, it, what if we identify a specific spot where there is uh, a whole bunch of stuff happening. Uh, the congestion due to the hospital movement, the fact that the Clay Street Learning Center is there, the fact that it's a school bus stop, the fact that there are no crosswalks that are identified 
the fact that maybe a calming that might be required at intervals down the street does not exist, even if it's crosswalks like over on John Street. So this, what you see in front of me, is that initial set of diagrams that are trying to translate this, mostly this column, the initial response column, onto the physical space of our proposal that will <coughs> result in suggestions for implementation of specific identifiable projects. The sidewalks, and this will lead us into the uh, transportation and utility as well, um, but the landscape and design of the sidewalks, the observation was that they were consistent with and in a consistent relationship to the street. Um, and I guess you might want to well, well, Holly actually did us all a favor. Yeah. Uh, if you see this uh, drawing, uh, which through the magic of the uh, uh, Photoshop scanner, we took from her notebook and put it here. One of the things that actually is emerging as a key to the quality of the street is going to appear in a recommendation that's going to have to do with zoning. It's going to do have to do with setbacks and building bulk and scale. And it's going to have to do back to the landscape map with the kind of setbacks, what we're calling green setbacks of yards here and here. But if they were changed, and in fact, they're very complex and very varied. As if, if you go up and look at that later, that's a set of sections showing the relationship between the street, the curb, whatever may be, exist or not, a green strip, a sidewalk, a hedge or not, a yard, a porch, a facade. Uh, and it's very intricate. And that intricacy is what becomes the base, for example, through the changeover to commercial use. Uh, it's not only the fact that the, the use changes, it's that this set of relationships of the car, the curb, the grass, the sidewalk, the grass, the tree, the hedge, and the foundation planning in the house is destroyed. And then the streets are completely different. So this set of sections is extraordinarily significant and important in the end. Um, and it will allow us to make probably our most concrete, I think, at this time, in the time frame we have, set of recommendations that could be followed up by the borough in their resurfacing, rebuilding the sidewalks. Uh, treating the trees and so on and so forth as they, as they follow through with that program. So it's that set of, set of relationships. I about this drawing. Sure. The other thing that's really interesting about them is they start at one end and they go right. down the street. So in a way, it's like a, a film where you're, you're moving along the street and you're getting pictures as you move along. Right. And what we will do is by today, we were only able to make this uh, an enlarged version of how it's uh, uh, if, if you want a great book, there's a book by a man named Jacob, Jacob's called Great Streets, in which he goes one step further and shows the comparison and then puts in all these in a little bit uh, more, um, well, more coordinated, more disciplined, comparative way. So we're going to translate that into the experience of walking up and down the street. So we will be doing that in the future in the way that this reads top, which is up here, right here, everything looking this way as you walk down the street. So you might look at that later. If I may insert, I think all these discussions and how we look at the street is from the point of view that the pedestrian experience should be maintained, enhanced, reinforced, and the car should be tamed. Uh, so that's really always underlying objective, so in case we forget. <laughs> no, we're going to get to that. We're not going to forget it. Transportation and utilities. And that's broken up with two groups. Obviously, and then we're going to, to go into the power lines and utility, uh, water and sewer. But on the mobility, there are multiple modes and uses that are obviously on the street struggling to coexist. Pedestrian, bicycle, transit buses, personal auto, goods movement, emergency vehicles. Um, I'll just read through the, <coughs> the issues so that there's spatial limitations, they're varying right of way and widths, there's no signage uh, for bicycles, particularly. 
unknown stops, routes, and schedules with regard to the transit buses, high volumes of peak particularly for autos. Uh, this movement, we haven't talked a lot about that, but there are some issues around particular parking of those uh, larger scale things, uh, vehicles on the street, uh, squaring uh, views, but that has, we have not really gotten into detail about that. Um, ambulances being noisy and what people are hoping will be primarily a residential area that it would be respected for that and, and dangerous in terms of their movements through. The initial, uh, then there's traffic. Um, it's a dysfunctional Route 206 intersection. Uh, the regional versus local use of the, the street. Uh, the difficult, difficulty to traveling from east to west sides of town. But there's no the way north. between here and here, for example. And at the north end, it's difficult at the 206 end. Um, and then there are issues of safety. Uh, the crossing is dangerous for all pedestrians. There were particular concerns it's, uh, with regard to school children walking and bicycling, uh, the parent drop off at community park, speeding in general, and some of the uh, varying widths, um, and the lack of sort of speed designation contributes to that. Uh, minimal, it's a big issue. It's there sometimes, it's not there whether it's followed or not, it's another thing. Residential character <coughs> compromised, and sporadic street parking and apologies. On this right column of initial responses, the, uh, the pedestrian uh, and the initial response to all of these comments is that the street was highly burdened by this multiple uh, role of gateway, artery, spine, and main street. We're sort of trying to figure out what should it be. Uh, I think in the discussions around tra traffic, landscape, and management, the, the uh, gateway seems to have been more visual <laughs> than an access point. And the artery aspect uh, was that it may have an important role internally, but that it should not be used for um, major regional traffic flow. On the bicycles, the concept of sharing the road or whether there should be dedicated lanes. Um, there's still issues you know, being considered in, in how the street would be designed. Uh, with the transit uh, system to enhance transit system facilities, uh, whether there are stops, shelters, uh, information, um, certainly route schedules uh, being clear. Um, with regard to the high volumes of the tra change, the traffic flow potential was discussed, but there was also the, the uh, redirection approach uh, the types of traffic coming to the community and that kind of thing. So that was circulation management. Um, on the dysfunction of 206, the better signalization and alignment of those streets, looking to left turn on left turns onto route 206. Going to the shopping center is important to be able to in that direction to make a, a left turn. Uh, so you're, you're, you're not only going this way on your way from Montreal to Mobile, uh, with the cut off, <laughs> uh, right? Uh, and not coming down Winspoon Street. Uh, but there will be people going this way. So we are hoping that some organization, uh, and maybe just designation, in other words, I, I tend to see the mobility issue, uh, I was just thinking of an analogy in which there's so many things sharing so little space that it's like, you know, you see an ad for a closet organizing system. If only I could do this, wouldn't it be easier to find my socks? Uh, and, and, and maybe that, therefore, if the bike lane, the pedestrian lanes, the pedestrian crossing, I mean, right here is an important point. At the school, the school access, the bus, the people dropping people off, the people walking children to school at community park. Uh, really needs uh, organization through methodologies of designation of territories 
that have to do with the kind of paving and the kind of landscaping treatment that the world has, in, has evolved in the last 20 years that are much more sophisticated than simply asphalt over everything. Right? Nobody, uh, you know, the difference between the sock drawer and the shirt drawer are not an uh, So, and at the same time, there's a, there's, a, there's a beautiful pedestrian way over here to the high school uh, and bike way. Uh, well, we've never really made the final kind of linkage, which is that this graphic doesn't really ever get over here. Uh, you have to go through the back counties. Sort of right here, you face a choice. Well, which do I do? And you end up on your bike or walking in a parking sort of very strangely disorganized spot. Uh, so we put that on there. So this is a whole area, for example, that is one of the ways in which a node can be improved through designated laning and articulation of the ground surface. Uh, clearly something might also uh, happen right uh, here in that regard. If anything happens here, it should happen here too. Uh, Holly actually discovered something that is obvious to all of us, but I never really recorded in the recording part of my brain, which is that the parking in the borough is on this side and the parking of the township is on this side. So there's just an added layer of disorganization and confusion that has prevented us even seeing the possibility of the through designation of a bicycle lane. So even a study of whether or not it's possible to actually have the township and the borough parking on the same side of the street, I'm not sure what the right answer is. We just, we just noticed the phenomenon. Uh, but if, if it were possible, to do something with that street parking in favor of a continuity and defined or designated <clears throat> with uh, some sort of color uh, on, on where it's appropriate to have a bicycle. And the car knows that, the pedestrian knows that, and the bike knows that. Michael, can I? Can I? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, you probably know this, but the map, the map doesn't show that you cannot, in fact, come down Valley Road to 206 and turn left on the 206. Because the uh, traffic is route, you cannot make a left turn right here. off of Valley Road right. onto 206. Right. Right. You must come down Valley Road to the west, go north to that, either turn up to the light or to the, the or to the middle turn one, there. and then go left. And right. if you think that doesn't create, <laughs> then I'm talking about coming from east to west. If you're coming from the shopping center to San Francisco, you have to go up and over and around. And, and that's another kind of problem that throws you, in fact, if you want to go to Westcott Road, you almost inevitably go down Witherspoon Street and cut over on uh -huh. one of the yes, two ways. Right. That's right. So it's, it's, dropping. Yeah, then it's a significant um, flip. Well, what we want to do is walk that. I, I think there is the, I think the township has, has a request to go right there I, to the state. I think that that's but there were, well, we, because, because it's too close. It's too close. Yeah. Yeah. The position was. Yeah, but there are a lot of lights that are close to each other. I mean, in other towns, I think it's just a matter of, of pushing <coughs> back the space. Exactly, to add a light and not deal with the geometry of the street. Um, we'll go into the, the safety. The crossing that's um, crossing in the pedestrian um, issues with burning children and the drop off we talked quite a bit about the advisory committee um, meeting on Thursday. And a suggestion is they, the parents queue using Witherspoon Street as their lane, uh, both directional lanes to get into the, the community park driveway, it prevents, it, it, it creates backups. And so it was suggested to redirect uh, that internal roadway and have it actually enter from John Street, taking Verge to John and coming around so that the, that the that's the direction that the parents are basically circulating in, just in the reverse. So essentially have them come in through and queue on the property of, of uh, the school, which is 
uh, very good suggestion. So we're looking at that. And the management issue is how the cross bar <coughs> in that particular location manages the street. He's a pretty passive guy who stands on the curb. Some stand in the middle and direct traffic. So you, there are varying approaches. So and how the uh, sidewalk itself is um, uh, either illuminated or, or um, uh, highlighted uh, because it's a crosswalk there that it is going into a uh, block, but it has no intersection. So it's a, it's a confusing sort of uh, arrangement there. Um, and as Michael said, I mean, this, these are our suggestions. We're in this phase we're going into more refinement and further uh, uh, working out of sort of details of how things might be done in a varied set of options. Um, with regard to speeding and some other issues, changing the road width um, at certain sections or certainly creating perhaps a more consistent one where the road width, where the road width would actually create a, a slower speed throughout Witherspoon Street. Um, and then in terms of parking, some clarity on the time and the purpose and the permit. Certainly the area churches, one on Sunday, to be able to park. Um, there are some commercial uses that need uh, parking, whether it's on their site or whether it's on street, what days 